today we're gonna shoot this Han Dynasty crossbow reproduction that I made. Ready? Wow! Hello, this is Jack from Historical Archery. Today we're going to be talking about historical Chinese crossbows and specifically the Han Dynasty crossbow reproduction that I made. When we think of historical Chinese crossbows, often the repeating chukunu gets mentioned. Um, probably because of video games and popular mainstream culture, this thing is a lot more popular. But the thing is, these were quite a niche weapon and um, it was not the standard infantry weapon for crossbows. When it comes to the crossbows, there's, the Chinese used a wide variety of crossbow designs, but this video will be focusing on the Han Dynasty crossbows um, used by the Han people. Non-Han ethnic crossbows are not going to be discussed in this video much, um, but it should be its own video, such as these Hmong crossbows. Um, these ones I'll go into detail in a specific video. So we're not going to be talking about these. So in this video, we're going to be focusing on the Han Dynasty crossbows um, used by the military and my reproduction. I have to make a reproduction if I want to shoot one. Um, so including the trigger, everything here is, repro is in reproduction. And sometimes it doesn't follow exactly the materials. So for example, the historical Han Dynasty triggers use bronze, but this trigger is using brass. So when it comes to the first ever crossbows, people often mention the Chinese being the first to invent crossbows. The thing is, we're not entirely sure. Something as primitive as a stick with a string and a tillering stick can be made in the Stone Age. This is a African, 20th century African bow, a child bow that I put on into a tillering stick. Uh, it's specifically the Gogo tribe of uh, Tanzania, the 20th century. Um, so this, this bow, um, yes, it's in the 20th century, but it's a very simple design, just a stick, a string, and you can have a tillering stick. A stick with some notches, and boom, you have a crossbow here. But in terms of the archaeological evidence, crossbow locks have been discovered in Chufu, which is modern-day China of northeastern China, dated around 600 BC. And before this, we really don't have any archaeological evidence, but it's likely they were invented way before this with more primitive style triggers, like just a simple notch, or um, this is a very simple trigger, and it could have been made in the Stone Age. We just don't have the evidence. But a simple trigger like this works, uh, but there's limitations to it, but it works. Here is a Western African crossbow in my collection and also for sale. These are things that aren't limited to Stone Age people. In theory, they can make these things. So now that we got that out of the way, uh, the first archaeological finds of trigger locks are from China. And then a little bit later, around the 4th century BC, you have writings and mentions of Greek crossbows as well. So compared to the Roman and the Greek crossbows of antiquity, these Chinese crossbows were mass-produced for infantry, while the Greek and the Roman crossbow were more of a niche weapon. We do have Westerners using uh, siege engines that resemble crossbows, such as the Carthaginians using siege artillery devices, but we're not entirely sure how their siege artillery is developed. Um, anyways, let's get into the Chinese one because this is what the video is about. So let's start with the trigger because Everyone talks about the trigger when they talk about the hand dynasty crossbows first. The earliest triggers only have three pieces, the teeth, the intermediate piece, um, maybe you can call it a sear, and then just the trigger. So these three pieces are the integral piece, but then the shell, the, the bronze shell, is a later addition to increase the strength of these locks. So for these locks, you have it in the lock position, and then you press down, and it's locked. And to pull the trigger, now it's unlocked. That's how these triggers work. So these were likely mass produced by specific arsenals in ancient China that would um, cast these in bronze and then they would send them to woodworkers in China, craftsmen, to install them onto the wooden stocks. 
and the wood would have depended on the region because the Han Dynasty was very big. There's a wide variety of wood species. Um, so for the stock, it would really depend on the geographical region. Um, I live in Canada, so I picked um, just uh, cedar. So cedar uh, is actually pretty weak, but for 100 or 200 pound, it's fine. It doesn't make a difference. And you want these things to fit perfectly. And if you don't fit them perfectly, they'll wiggle. So you need a, a skilled woodworker to be able to do this. When I did it first, I screwed up because I had some spacing in it. So you really have to make sure you know what you're doing um, to make sure that it fits perfectly. And they had still skilled craftsmen, of course. Um, now let's get into the pistol grip here. Um, I guess you can call it pistol grip, but basically there's the grip to hold onto your palm and there's the trigger. Um, these things are usually so small you can only put two fingers in them. You really only need two fingers because it has a very light trigger pull. Um, but you can also see some of them with a stopping device here, um, like a safety, to prevent it from dry firing accidentally. Of course, the trigger guard is also designed to prevent that because um, you really don't want to dry fire these things. So trigger guard is just a piece of bent bamboo and glued on to the back. That's it. Now let's talk about the, this, I call this a kickstand, but you can also use it for stringing the bow. So of course, to attach a bow like this, you would put the bow, the prod on there, and then you would lash it with string. What this is designed for is that you can use any bow, really. Any bow would, as long as it has the draw length, it's gonna fit here. But just make sure when you mount this thing, it's on an angle. So these kickstands are designed to increase your draw length, your kick length, because when you put your feet here, you get an extra few inches of draw length. So based on my height, and because I know ancient Han Chinese people were shorter than me, I would estimate that the maximum kick length of a Han Dynasty person on average is about 27 inches of, of draw length measured from the back of the bow. Um, of course, it depends on each individual and it depends on where the kickstand is located. If you want to have a further kick length, you can just have the kickstand a lot further, but then your lashings are going to be longer. Let's talk about the, the prod. So this is a thing that I think most people are interested about. So what are the draw weights of Han Dynasty crossbows? According to the Ju Yan uh, records, or according to the Chu Yin slips, um, the, it's a maintenance record during the Han Dynasty. Basically, the most common draw weight was 390 pounds. That's six Chinese stone during the Han Dynasty. So 390 pounds is an incredible amount of draw weight, um, but, for crossbows, it's actually a fairly reasonable amount. You see, with a European style crossbow with a, such a short prod, it's quite easy to get 300 pounds of draw weight here. Horn sinew composite horn bows here, they easily get 1,000 pounds if they're thick enough. Um, but their, cro their, their power strokes are usually under 15 inch draw lengths. There is a lot more efficiency because these have a longer draw length. That being said, um, depending on the artwork and the archaeological find, some of the Chinese crossbows have shorter power strokes, especially when you get into their burial ones for nobles. Uh, you gotta keep in mind, if they're burying a crossbow for a nobleman, it's most likely not a military weapon, but something um, to show off wealth or some kind of, you know, maybe he really enjoyed that crossbow and that's why he wanted it buried with him. So it's not, it's very unlikely to be a military weapon. The military ones, for example, the archaeological finds from the Qin, Qin Dynasty um, are about this dimension of roughly around 28 inches of length. Um, but especially when you get into the Ming Dynasty, by that time they already have firearms, so there's really no need to have such a long power stroke because for power you can just use a firearm. And then, then crossbows became more of a niche weapon. Um, in fact, the bows during the Ming Dynasty were mostly bamboo bundled together. In the Ming Dynasty, if you want power, just use a firearm, right? Um, because you're already talking about 15th century warfare there. But during the 200 BC era, they didn't have firearms. So these, this was your firearm of the day. So for example, here I have a 290 pound, almost 300 pounds of draw weight at full draw, which is 26 inches of draw length. So the problem with this is it's a D shape. When it's strong, it's D shaped. Um, the thing is, 
His, most of the artwork of Han Dynasty crossbows suggests more of a M shape, something like reflex handle with reflex tips or just straight handle with reflex tips. This is the most common shape depicted on artwork. But you gotta keep in mind that usually artwork depicts more the rich people and it, it doesn't really, they usually don't depict people of the poorer status. So there might be some bias in here. There are some artwork depicting D-shape bows as well. They are rare, but more commonly you see the ones with these reflex shapes. Um, and I think some of the, depending on the region, in the southern China, they would use more simpler just bamboo slats tied together, like how they make repeating crossbows, depending on the region. In, in the southern China, there's a lot of bamboo, so you use what you have. In nor northwestern China, you have more horn bows, so you're more likely to see horn bows with reflex uh, tips and reflex handles. And of course, you can use the enemy's uh, bows if they're too heavy for your archers, you can just mount it onto the crossbow and use them uh, as crossbows. Uh, you can have a 200 pound vertical bow and it takes an incredible amount of strength that you can't pull it, but it'd be easily spanned with your legs. For the archaeological finds of the Han Dynasty, some of them are very long, some of them are shorter. Um, this is, falls under the longer ones. It's, it's actually lighter than many guns that the infantry use today but it's just bulky and weird to carry. I hate carrying this all day for a march. That would suck, but somebody has to carry it. But um, for siege defense, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, but for, you know, for long marches, you kinda, it's better to have a wagon with you if possible. And we have seen the hand armies using wagons to pull, you know, ammunition um, and uh, food, all kinds of army supplies. So one thing I was always curious about is, would the crossbow be performing the same if it was taken apart and just drawn by hand? Of course, this is only doable with lighter draw weights of the one stone and two stone crossbows, um, maybe three stone. Um, so I tested it with um, this to see how much percentage loss we have. Um, so the first one I tested is with a bamboo plus wood laminate and it is 120 pounds at 28 inches with a deflex with uh, slight reflex tips so it's um when it, when i shot it by hand i get i use a 75 gram arrow and i get 159 fps the results are quite similar there was only a three percent loss and that's likely because of friction um so i'm not surprised at all about this result and then here and then I also tested it with the fiberglass um, bow in this video and with the 65 gram wood arrow I get 173 FPS and then when I shot it with a crossbow of the same draw length of course I get 166 FPS so it was a 4% loss and then if I do it with a Korean carbon bow um, with the same roughly the same weight um, it's 190 191 FPS when it's shot by hand with thumb draw so there was an 8% loss so of these three you see there's a 3% loss a 4% loss and an 8% loss there is some loss when you mount it onto the crossbow and it's most likely because of friction